Now let's talk about things that you should consider within a few days after their death. One thing is to notify family and friends. Now notifying family and friends can be one of the hardest duties that you have, but there are some ways to, to lighten the burden. Start with your loved one's closest friends and relatives. Ask them to call other family members and have kind of like a calling tree. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't worry about calling everyone. Just call the people closest to your loved one. You can reach out to the rest of their contacts later. Give yourself some grace and take breaks when you need them. Remember also to call your loved one's employer if they were working. Ask information about benefits and any paychecks that may be due. Also ask about whether there's a company-wide life insurance policy um, that you should know about. Next, I wanna talk about arranging for the funeral, memorial service, burial and or cremation. You wanna search your loved one's uh, documents to find out whether there was a prepaid burial plan. Ask a friend or family member to go with you uh, to the mortuary. If they had an estate plan, see whether a final disposition and authorization form is included in their portfolio. That form will have your loved one's exact wishes and who they wanted to be in charge of making their final arrangements. Those persons should then prepare uh, an obituary. Now, exactly when a funeral service should take place depends a lot on the desires of your loved one, religious uh, practices, if that applies, and how soon family and friends can gather, especially when they're traveling from long distances. Now, many American funerals take place within a week or less from the death of the uh, individual. With the help of a funeral home, a week is typically enough time to make arrangements and contact loved ones. Now, historically, funerals had to take place just a matter in just a matter of days because of decomposition concerns. Now, since today there are uh, preservation methods, families have a bit more time to prepare and get their affairs in order. This helps families make arrangements and to pick a day to hold the funeral. A standard funeral can be about uh, up to about two weeks uh, after the date of death. If the body's cremated, the family can wait as long as they'd like, but most are done within uh, no more than a month at the latest. If the deceased is already buried or cremated, a memorial service can be held at a later date. Just remember that you won't be able to please everyone. Just do your best to honor your loved one's wishes. If the person was in the military or belonged to a fraternal or religious group uh, or uh, another group, contact that organization. For example, here in uh, the DMV, as we call it, um, we have a significant number of military and veterans. Uh, did your loved one wish to be buried at a veterans uh, or a national cemetery? Each one has specific eligibility requirements, so you want to make sure and know that. Did your loved one belong to a sorority or a fraternity? From my clients, I've learned that there are rituals unique to each organization that are observed when one of its members dies. In our office, we ask for this important information and include it in the final disposition form that I referred to earlier. You'll need to contact the chapter in which your loved one was an active member and advise them of your loved one's death. You'll follow similar steps if your loved one belonged to a church, synagogue, mosque, or other religious group. They will usually publish a notice of some kind uh, to notify their members. The next thing you want to think about 
uh, just within a few days after the death of your loved one is the importance of securing assets immediately um, or soon thereafter a loved one's death some people sometimes family will visit the home and how can i put this politely help themselves uh, to items to keep as mementos the problem arises if that item was promised to someone else in your loved one's will so you can guard against theft by locking the car the house and garage look for cash keys and other valuables and write down a list of what you find this will be helpful when it is time to distribute the assets. Then store these valuables in a safe place in the home. Now, if you think your family members are going to question your motives, bring one or two trustworthy people to confirm that you didn't take anything. And consider your phone to take pictures of the condition of the house and its contents. Now, while you secure the valuables, go ahead and throw out garbage and perishable food, clean the bathrooms and do laundry. Basically clean up anything that would go bad or cause bad odors. You know, by the way, you can always hire someone to do this for you too. And finally, if you don't happen to live nearby your loved one, ask a neighbor or even the local police department to check on the house daily. You could even ask someone to house it during the funeral, since unfortunately thieves sometimes look at obituaries to plan robberies when they think no one will be home. 